Hey guys, Meteorologist with Chris Tomer here with this mountain weather update. All right, I want to start up at uh, Alta here because it's a momentous day. We just broke 600 inches now for the season, 608 officially. Uh, made a note here last year at the same time. Of course, last year was the biggest season on record at Alta. Uh, it was at 877 and a half, so still a significant difference from one year ago. But this is big, you know, breaking 600 inches so far for the season. And it's been quite a 24 hours across parts of Colorado, Wyoming, with very windy conditions. Well, that windy storm will start to exit now, and things are going to settle down across uh, Colorado and Utah, eventually Wyoming. Um, but the next full-blown storm system that rides its way in is 4, 13, 14, and 15. That's the next one. You can see the timing here for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Sierra, and the Northeast. So, for example, in the Wasatch, I'm forecasting moderate to heavy snow, but not until moder moderate to heavy snow accumulation until 413 and 414. In Colorado, light snow accumulation on 48, moderate to heavy accumulation on 413 and 14. So it's that that next that's that storm system coming on 413, 14, 15 is the one that's really going to deliver the next shot of significant snow. In the Northeast, mainly rain 410 through 4. 13, although it may end to some light snow accumulation on 413. So we'll we'll look at all that in this forecast update. I want to go over to water vapor satellite imagery here and just kind of uh, mark the key features. So on this, your moisture aloft is in your whites and your blues, and there's our windy storm exiting finally, but it's still it's still dragging precip and snow across parts of Wyoming and Montana. It's just going to take another day before it exits those areas. So what's next? Well, there's a little fast moving area of low pressure here that's going to dive in on the coattails and just kind of ride and, and race its way through southern Colorado and New Mexico over the next 24 hours, and then that's gone. But here's the main player down the road. That's our uh, that's going to be our 413, 14, and 15 storm system. So that's going to be the one to watch. In fact, here's how it plays out with the forecast jet stream. By close of business today, you can see the kind of on the back side there, that secondary area of low pressure, and then it races down towards the four corners, and then eventually it moves out of Colorado and New Mexico, and then it's gone. Uh, we're going to have a few days of high-pressure ridging, so it is a waiting game until this, our next storm system, moves in. So this is 413. You can see it. That dip in the jet sliding into the Intermountain West, continuing into 414, and then eventually it starts to exit. But notice there's still a dip in the jet. We may have some additional energy kind of spilling south, 415 and 416. Putting precip on top of all of this, so forecast uh, radar and satellite by 530 this afternoon. You can still see some of that, that cyclonic backwash across uh, parts of Wyoming and Montana with that windy storm, but then it all begins to exit by tomorrow. And then look what happens down around the four corners, southern Colorado. New Mexico into 4.9, late 4.8 and 4.9. That little area of low pressure kind of slides through there with some small precip, some very light precip. And then it's a waiting game across a lot of the west. So focus up into the Pacific Northwest and BC. Here comes that storm by 4.12 into 4.13. It moves out of California and then into the interior. And then we start to see some decent accumulations, moderate to heavy across a lot of the Intermountain West. Through, and there's a little bit of extra energy that comes south with that dip in the jet on 415, 416. All right, so let's look at the numbers here. Here's what I've got, uh, grand totals. By late 416, and keep in mind what you see here in the Wasatch, a lot of it in the Tetons, and most of it that you see in Colorado doesn't occur, it doesn't actually accumulate until 413, 14, and 15. Um, and look at the Pacific Northwest and interior BC, good numbers there because that's going to be the origin of this storm system on 413 and beyond. It all drops out of the Pacific Northwest, so we should see some pretty good moisture accumulation up there. Let me break it down by time period. So rest of today through tomorrow, some light additional accumulations across Colorado with that, that curvature and the, and the leftover precip in Wyoming and Montana and wind up there as well, and then eventually that storm will move away. Okay, next time period, again, waiting game right here, 4.9 through 4.11, very light, unless you're up into B.C. Here we are in 4.12 through 4.16. Here comes that storm system, you might recall. So we get a little bit of snow in the Sierra, but the note on the Sierra is when that storm hits, we're going to have high snow levels of like 7,000 feet, maybe even higher. So there's going to be some sacrificing of snow accumulation unless you're above, uh, you know, 7,000, 8,000 feet. Um, and then that storm hit the Wasatch, the Tetons, Big Sky, and Colorado. And look at the numbers during that time period up in the Pacific Northwest and interior BC. Okay, let's go to the Northeast. So again, mainly rain, 4, 10, 11, 12, 13, may end as some light snow accumulation, which is what you see right here um, from 413. But that's at the very highest of elevations at the ski areas of the Northeast. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for this mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.